Hey all my friends, please check to make sure that you are still subscribed to this channel. People do get unsubscribed every day. And consider please joining my channel membership. You get exclusive videos, exclusive members only live streams, emojis and more. Join the Doomcock Army. We need you my friends. Thank you and enjoy this video. <laughs> Greetings my friends. I am Dictor Van Doomcock, the future ruler of Earth, and I am horribly upset and disturbed by the recent announcement of the LEGO Star Wars Holiday Special that is coming this November to Disney+. Plus. Disturbed because I know what's coming. For those of you mercifully spared the sight of Lumpy the old Wookiee getting turned on by watching video of Diane Carroll on a set straight out of a 70s disco, or Harvey Corman appearing in several skits so spectacularly unfunny that I personally believe they opened a portal into another universe by bombing so hard that aliens have since visited Earth through the resulting wormhole wondering what the hell the joke wasn't. I mean the many armed Julia Child cooking sketch thing. That kind of shtick belongs in Star Wars about as much as Spock painting kids faces at a birthday party. Oh hell. I just gave Kurtzman another idea for a Star Trek series. Star Trek, Spocky the Birthday Clown. Where Spock decides it's logical to become a birthday clown because he likes science and birthdays are scientific since they always involve adding. Adding one more year. Well, it's not complicated science, but times are hard and Spocky needs a new pair of clown shoes. But I digress. If you haven't seen the Star Wars Holiday Special, you haven't seen B. Arthur singing a sad song about the Moss Eisley Cantina closing, and the Cantina band plays da, 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 real slow, like a dirge, as the monsters hang their heads. If you haven't seen it, you haven't missed anything other than, perhaps, a massive die-off of brain cells and a creeping sense that the end of the world is nigh. But now, I hear that matters are about to get worse. Worse than a horny old Wookiee watching porn, you ask? Worse than Harvey Corman doing desperate, tedious shtick in drag with six arms? Yes, my friends. This thing seems slated to be desperately worse than the Star Wars Holiday Special, because in the Lego Star Wars Holiday Special, Ray is going to go back in time and mentor Luke Skywalker. Yeah. She's going to go back in time and take over from Obi-Wan, showing Luke how to lift rocks, chew gum, and shave in the morning. This article appeared in usatoday.com yesterday, and it is titled Star Wars Exclusive New Disney Plus Lego Holiday Special Pays Homage to Its Kitschy 1978 Predecessor. With a new holiday special, Star Wars is tapping into its kitschy, jewel-tied past with a reverence and a Christmas carol style. Premiering November 17th on the Disney Plus streaming service, the LEGO Star Wars holiday special brings beloved heroes like Rey, Finn, and Poe Dameron back together to celebrate Life Day, the Star Warsy holiday introduced way back in the infamous Star Wars holiday special that first aired on CBS November 17th, 1978. Wait a minute. I think this article is already starting out with a bunch of inaccuracies. Saying that Ray, Finn, and Poe Dameron are beloved heroes? By who? I, I really haven't met a whole lot of people that love Ray, Finn, or Poe Dameron. Some can tolerate Finn or don't hate Poe. Ray. <laughs> well, beloved isn't the word I would use for that Mary Sue nothing. Ah, uh, the article continues. The new project features animated building block versions of characters throughout Star Wars history and pays homage to the special's disco-era predecessor, which has become a so-bad-it's-good cult favorite as fans have found it via video-sharing sites and bootleg videos. Quote, We wanted to give a wink and a nod to the original, unquote. Executive producer Josh Rhymes says, the Lego Holiday Special, which Rhymes teases, will feature a few Star Wars movie actors reprising their roles, catches up with the cast after the events of last year's saga closing and saga ending, I might add, Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Rey and droid pal BB-8 
head off on a quest to gain a deeper knowledge of the Farce, but their visit to a mysterious Jedi temple sends them careening through time and space. Rey interacts with Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Yoda, and other characters in some of the franchise's most beloved moments as they try to return in time for a life day feast with her friends on Chewbacca's Wookiee homeworld of Kashyyyk. Quote, it's a celebration of the saga, unquote, Rhyme says. Quote, a lot of characters will be interacting with different characters and perhaps even different versions of themselves at different ages. Lego versions of Emperor Palpatine, Vader, and Kylo Ren get to hang out together. Quote, it's really hilarious with what's going to happen with those guys, Rhyme says. Boy, this is sounding like a worse deal all the time, but it's about to get worse, folks. Buckle your seatbelts. But the real heart and soul of the special is Rey's relationship with Luke. Not the old Jedi Master she knew, but instead the rookie rebel version from George Lucas' original 1977 Star Wars movie. Quote, It becomes a much different take on a teacher and apprentice with the more seasoned Rey and a younger Luke, Rhymes adds. Making Star Wars fans all over the world puke their guts out. I added that last bit. Well, sounds like a recipe for disaster, doesn't it? An experienced Ray is going to go back in time to school Luke Skywalker on how to use the Force. What a relentlessly awful idea. Why doesn't she go ahead and just tell them all how to blow up the Death Star while she's at it? Or warn them not to go to Cloud City on Bespin, because Vader will be waiting for them. Why doesn't she just tell them everything that's about to happen and save the day over and over again, because she's the bestest ever? What better way to steal glory and strip Luke and Han and Leia of all their heroism and claim it for herself? What better way to smear Rey like rancid butter all over the Star Wars saga under the guise of harmless comedy so that everything reeks of the Disney sequel trilogy? You know, I predicted this very thing in my parody of Solo that I published in advance of the release of Solo where Rey went back in time. Let's see how that turned out. Last. Chewie, we're home. I wish I knew how to fly this thing. Who the hell are you? My name is Ray. I've used the Force to travel back in time to show you how to fly the Falcon. I'm no expert in hokey religions, but time travel isn't a Force power, is it? Only for girls. The Force is female. Now shut up and let me show you how to fly this thing. Then I'll show Chewie how to shoot his bowcaster, and after that, I'll teach you how to smuggle. You're the greatest. I know. Chewie, when I die, make sure people hug her. <laughs> Not good. That's how it turned out. And all this raises the question, why won't Disney leave Luke Skywalker alone? They relentlessly mocked and humiliated him in the Disney sequel trilogy. They relentlessly mocked and humiliated him in the Disney sequel trilogy. Are they hell-bent on leaving absolutely nothing for fans moving forward? Famously, in a behind-the-scenes video at Lucasfilm, one of their team was spotted with a picture of Luke Skywalker hanging in their cubicle with a big X drawn across his face. Lucasfilm, under Kennedy was targeting Luke from the start for reasons of identity politics, Luke having the misfortune of being a straight white male, and so he must be stripped of his heroism, his dignity, and his position as the greatest Jedi Knight in the Star Wars universe. If Lucasfilm wants to save Star Wars, if Disney is planning on retconning the sequel trilogy out of existence, they better stop dragging their feet. Because meanwhile, stupid, insulting, and infuriating garbage like this is creeping out into other venues like a contagion winding its way through a population. The implications of this are staggering. Is Disney reversing course, away from the notion of erasing the sequels? Or is this more corporate stupidity where one division doesn't know what the other division is doing? Was this a legacy project that was grandfathered in? Are these some lovely parting gifts to Star Wars fans by Kennedy on her way out the door? A little poison pill slipped into the Wookiee ale. 
I have my agents working on this right now, trying to get to the bottom of what this means to the larger picture in Star Wars, but I do know this. If you love Star Wars, you need to make your hatred of this idea plain to everyone. You need to flood Disney with tweets about how awful this is, and I'm afraid that when this hits Disney+, Plus, you may need to cancel your Disney Plus subscription to make it clear just how much you hate Rey going back and belittling Luke once again. Disney, if you're listening, here it is. We're sick of Rey, we're sick of what she represents, and sending her out in a Lego video is only going to make us hate Legos. There's nothing all that wrong with Rey herself, but given her role as a tool of Kathleen Kennedy's The Force's female agenda, she has become toxic to fans of George Lucas's Star Wars. And if you want the old fans back, you need to cut this shit out now. You're on your last chance, Disney. You had a great idea for how to get fans back. Erase the sequel trilogy, get rid of Kennedy, bring George Lucas in, and never ever talk about Rey again. But you're talking about Rey again, Disney. So what the fuck? Are you changing course? If so, let us know right now so we can all throw up our hands and walk away. To be clear, this is your last chance to save Star Wars, and you're blowing it. I will have more on this development, on what it is and what it means for Star Wars, but I am deeply concerned that Disney is now going over to the dark side. Who knew? A lovable Lego Kitty cartoon could be so loathsome. From the center of the earth, this is Dictor Van Doomcock bidding you all, my friends, stay angry. Ha, 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 ha,